frequently the father rock farmer would do this so that his son will harvest it. And this is an interesting uh, thing that you don't find in any part of the world except in that part of China. I can think of one uh, effect on me, not just my work, the way I am. And that is the importance of time. There's no instant uh, gratification in creating a work of art. Uh, I just don't find that that is possible. So a work of art, architecture, whatever it is, I think needs time to finally make a judgment as to whether it's right or not. And I think the time factor is very important in my work, I like to think so. Pei's family, whose roots date back 600 years, came from the high ranks of traditional society. His mother, Lian Chuin, died after a long illness, and Pei lived for a time with his grandfather. My grandfather was a very well-known calligrapher, and my mother was very accomplished in calligraphy poetry and music. So therefore, that side of the family is probably more art-oriented than my father's side of the family. But some of that must have rubbed off at some point in time. I think so. His father, Su Yi Pei, was the first banker in his family, a forward-looking man of business. After managing the Bank of China in Canton and Hong Kong, in 1927, he was sent to Shanghai the bustling financial center of a rapidly modernizing China. Pei moved with his father to Shanghai and studied at St. John's Middle School. He was very interested in my, my future. What do you want to do in life? Park Hotel at that time was coming up. 23 stories. Now 23 stories in 1934-35 in Shanghai, it's unbelievable. It's like building a hundred story building in New York. So as a young man, I was taken to it and I said, my gosh, that's fascinating business to be able to build a building of that height. So I said, maybe architecture. So that was the beginning. With every intention of returning to China, Pei left in 1935 to study architecture at the University of Pennsylvania. But he was quickly discouraged by what he saw as the school's emphasis on the antiquated Beaux-Arts method of teaching, and left before classes began. Unsure of his talent for drawing, Pei enrolled at MIT to study architectural engineering, a discipline that appealed to his analytic side. The dean suggested he reconsider. He was the one that told me after one year at MIT, he said, why don't you take up architecture instead. I said, Dean, I said, I don't draw very well. That's nonsense. Said, I don't know any Chinese that can't draw. <laughs> this is the way. And uh, of course, this is totally untrue, but, but it did give me enough courage to say, perhaps I should try. <laughs> and I did. Then I, from that point on, uh, I didn't turn back. I belong to those architects that believe that geometry is the driving force for design. But that doesn't mean that geometry consists only of the cone, the sphere, the cube. As Cezanne said in paintings, you know, it has to, one has to, 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 to make variation, combinations out of geometry. We can do that. That's not all. And there are many other elements that come into play to create a form, space, which is what architecture really is. You have to have light. Now, light is terribly important. What well, are shapes if there are no light? The light of the sun is magical because it changes so much. Geometry is the beginning for the, for the architect, for me anyway, a planning system, systemic thing that ties everything together. But beyond that, then you have texture, you have color, you have form, you have light, you have space. So it takes many things to, to make geometry into a work of architecture. The most dramatic example of how Pei's geometry derives from his understanding of structural principles 
can be seen in the Bank of China Tower in Hong Kong. In 1926, the first manager of the bank had been his father. Today, in this city of his childhood, his building rises from the dense skyline, commanding an unobstructed view of the harbor. On its completion, Pei's tower was the tallest building in Asia. Uh, the Hong Kong that I knew when I was a little boy, uh, I was here when I was two years old, so it's a different Hong Kong. In fact, the one thing I miss is the smell of coffee beans. When I was here six, seven years ago, I used to enjoy walking down the hill to my school and, and smell that coffee bean. <laughs> Building skyscrapers had never really interested Bay. There seemed to be nothing new to add to what the pioneers of modernism had already done. Ever since the early days in Chicago, uh, we have not really made much progress in the designing of tall buildings. We have Empire State Building, we have the John Hancock in Chicago, but none of them uh, somehow seem to make a statement saying that we're tall, because. And I think that the ultimately, I think, uh, what really persuaded me to accept this commission and to do a tall building is to see if I can find a, a raison d'etre for its design. And, this, and, the, and the, the way to approach it really is, to, is through structure. Because what makes a tall building unique is not its function, but what makes it unique is really that it has to stand there and resist Earthquakes resist wind, and the wind in Hong Kong is tremendous. It's, it's about more than twice as much as, uh, as New York. So therefore, these are challenges. And out of this challenge to design a tall building to resist earthquakes and winds, maybe a solution will come that will give it a, a character. The best way to, to structure this building is to put all the loads on the four corners of the building. Because in that way, the building can be very stable. Pei achieved an engineering breakthrough. The highest column of the tower distributes the weight of the building out to its four corners. Each time this column meets an intersection point, the loads it carries are distributed by the diagonals to the corner columns. By directing the loads outward to the exterior of the building, this structural system allowed column-free interior spaces and saved money by using much less structural steel. This was not the usual case of form following function. Here, form followed structure and became Pei's geometry. We just divided that square, with the base of this building square, into four 45 degree uh, quadrants, so that each quadrant will have a, a major uh, column. Uh, to take the load of what goes on top. And that division creates very, very sharp corners. I like that because it takes away from the bluntness of a high building. But the building changes as you drive. It's not frontal. 